For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker. Gas, gas, This gas. Penn State U.S. Army cadet is training to possibly save his life. Gas, he, gas, as all gas. cadets do and have done in the past, is learning how to install a protective mask in the event of a gas attack in the field of battle. Along with his weapon, he will keep this by his side, just in case. As far as warfare goes in the modern theater of war, it's anything goes. Poisonous gas, dirty bombs, and biologicals, just to name a few. But that's what we accept on the battlefield. With the onslaught of 9-11, that accepted battlefield has been gravely altered, at least in the United States. There is now the distinct possibility that domestically, we are now on the battlefield. With all the different types of threats we face, a biological attack could prove to be one of the most devastating. Anthrax, Ebola, and smallpox are just a few diseases that can be weaponized. And while we know what the weapons are, the problem isn't how to treat an outbreak, it can simply be, do we have enough vaccine to go around? Biopharmaceuticals, including vaccines, are made basically in living cells, and they're costly to produce for that reason. A variety of, of different cells are used. It might be uh, bacterial cell, yeast cells, animal cells. Perhaps uh, most people are familiar with uh, chicken eggs being the production platform for influenza vaccine. Uh, one egg, uh, one dose. All of these methods are, are, are very costly. Dr. Peter Romain, a plant pathology professor at Penn State, has been working to develop a method to rapidly produce therapeutic human drugs using modified mushrooms. This would reduce the reaction time of health officials when responding to biological emergencies. Scientists close to the mushroom have long recognized its potential as a platform for the mass production of uh, biopharmaceuticals. And this potential has not been explored for the simple reason that uh, we lacked a method for introducing the drug gene into the mushroom. The Penn State patent represents a gateway technology. It is the first method that will allow us to introduce uh, a variety of uh, drug genes into the mushroom with relative ease and economy. So now we're able to explore the uh, potential of the mushroom as a platform for the mass production of biopharmaceuticals. When there's a need for a particular vaccine or antibody that might uh, represent a medical countermeasure to a biowarfare threat, the mushroom has the potential to deliver in a very short period of time a very high quantity of the drug. And this is uh, what we are now actively engaged in and seeing if we can assemble a manufacturing platform for the Army where within a 12-week period we can mass produce 3 million doses of either a vaccine or a therapeutic monoclonal antibody that would represent a countermeasure to some perceived biowarfare threat. This gateway technology developed at Penn State takes advantage of the fast-growing mushrooms and the existing mushroom industry infrastructure. Uh, once we've uh, manufactured the drug in the uh, fruiting body of the mushroom, these would be mechanically harvested. And the beauty of the mushroom system is that all the technology needed for mass production of mushroom, for mechanical harvesting, is already in place from the food industry. So in our scenario of drug manufacture, we would uh, rely on mechanical harvesting. The mushrooms would then be whisked away to a laboratory where they would be extracted for the drug. The drug would be purified in the same manner that it is now purified from yeast or uh, bacterial cells or animal cells or from eggs, chicken eggs. With the ability to produce large quantities of therapeutic drugs and vaccines, another windfall from this method is that the outlook for developing countries will get brighter. In the future, a greater variety of biopharmaceuticals will be produced in a mushroom platform, and this will then translate into lower costs for drugs for the public. Um, and also, we think that the platform can be used to reach uh, developing 
countries or underdeveloped countries because we're looking into the whole idea of producing vaccines in the mushroom that could be administered orally. That's another advantage of using the edible mushroom because we could then express a vaccine protein in the mushroom. A powdered form of the mushroom with the vaccine could be prepared quite economically, capsulized and delivered to uh, developing uh, world countries where the infrastructure may not exist for immunization programs based on uh, injection. For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker.